Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this adorable Gingerbread Man cookie cutter cutout quilt block. And yes, that's a mouthful, but that's what it is. You're using cookie cutters and you're making a cutout and you're making this gorgeous quilt block. It's a lot of fun to do. It's really festive for the holidays. And it's very easy to switch it up from a gingerbread man cut out a cookie cutter to uh, any other shape you want. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. Here's the first one I did. This is with a light green, off white background with some green flowers on it and brown. Um, I'm using a directional fabric for this one. So when I show you how to line things up later, directional fabrics for this technique are a little bit trickier than others, but um, this takes a couple extra seconds to get it straightened up. Here's another one that I made uh, with the same background and using a, uh, a burgundy or a rust colored fabric, which I really love the way that one pops. Just a couple of hints on these blocks. You don't wanna use fabrics that are too bold. Like for example, this pink palm tree has a nice big palm tree pattern. It's all personal preference. It's completely up to you how you wanna do it, but I would suggest Sometimes the fabrics are gonna get a little lost in there if you have a big, bold background. It's just a hint, and again, it's totally up to you what you wanna do, but uh, that's my suggestion or one of my tips. So let's get started. Here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need two squares of fabric. You're gonna need one square for the background, and this is cut 10 and a half inches square. And it is a little bit directional, but I'm not gonna worry about that. It's a really subtle print. And then you're gonna need one square, cut 10 and a half inches square for the cutout shape. And in this case, I'm using this burgundy with just a, a slight little pattern there, a little bit of interest to it. You're gonna need a cookie cutter. There's my cookie cutter. I love this guy, I've used it many times. It measures about three and a half inches tall from foot to the top to about three inches wide. That's about what I would suggest for this. It sort of tends to fit perfectly, or not perfectly, but it fits really well if you use about this size cookie cutter for your, for your cutout shape. Any, you could do it a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, of course. The only risk you run if you do it too large is, um, and I'll show you on the background fabric, if it's too large, you don't, you're gonna lose any seam allowance space when you're sewing the quilt block together in a, in, a, um, in a quilt. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about size for your cookie cutter. So you need that. You're gonna need a good sharp pair of scissors. Uh, if you have applique scissors, I would use those too. You can get in those tiny corners when you're cutting out. You need a marking pen. And most important, you're gonna need your fusible web. You want paper-backed fusible web. In this case, I'm using a heavy duty or ultra hold fusible web. It's personal preference up to you. I like that stronger hold. There are much lighter weight fusible web, paperback fusible webs, which work just as well. And uh, they, um, they cut a little bit easier and they sew a little bit easier too. And I'll talk about that a little bit later when we're putting the, the block together. And this square is cut 10 inches square. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you're going to prepare this square and you're going to trace out your shape. So you're going to have to think back to grade school when you made snowflake cutouts when you folded those uh, squares in, in, into uh, the shape that you wanted to cut out your, your snowflake. So first thing you're going to do, this is the rough side, this is the side with the adhesive as I put that facing up. You're going to fold it in half this way, nice and even. sure it's nice and then I make that edge really crisp that folded edge nice and crisp then you're gonna fold it in half this way so you have a square like so and really flatten those edges as best you can. Then you're gonna take one of the corners. Now you don't wanna take the corner that is, doesn't have the folds in a, this open corner like this. You wanna take the corner that has the fold on one side and fold it over to the opposite corner. 
like so. Flatten it down so it looks like that. And you want all those, this, this whole side should be folded edges. Flip it over and repeat it on the other side. All right, almost looks a little bit like a butterfly, like so. Now, once it's done, all the folded edges should be along one side and on this long side and on the one short side. And this would all be the non-folded edges or the edges of the paper. A way to test that you folded it right is to open it up and look and it looks like big X or a big star shape. If you have a square in there, that's wrong. Um, and I do that all the time, <laughs> just, it's easy to do, but that's how you want it to look. So let's fold it back up again and then we're gonna trace the shape onto the, uh, the folded paper. So you're gonna take your gingerbread man, and this is where it gets important, the, the, how you lay it out. You're gonna lay him out, you're gonna do an imaginary line where he's split in half, straight down the middle, and you want it down here. Let's see, I think that's about right. You want his foot to touch this folded edge. This is all the folded edge again, because if you cut, if you didn't, if you don't leave anything uncut along this edge, it's not gonna work. You want that, that's that sort of, how do I explain it? It's the joining part of the, the circle or of his foot. Let me see if I can show you on here. That's where that uncut part is. You, if you cut that, it won't work. You'll just have four individual gingerbread men. So you slide it into position like so. I line that right up on that folded edge, sort of go up his legs, it's centered. He's just about halfway. I think that looks pretty good. And then you're gonna trace him. And I like to use a gel pen, it's a lot easier to mark. It's a little hard when you're making the video, I can't really see where I'm marking, but hopefully that's working. Trace along the outside. Okay, yes, that worked. Okay, you can see he's halfway down the middle. That foot is touching. We're gonna leave that uncut because that's that joining edge. And then we're gonna cut this guy out. It is a little tough to cut through with this, this sort of heavy duty fusible web. That's why you want these nice sharp scissors. Okay. So let me show you this one first. This is the outside, which actually is sort of cool too. You could use that if you wanted to. I think that makes a whole different look and there's the inside, but I just tossed that. I might keep some of this for a smaller applique piece, but, and here's the moment of truth. Sometimes it's a little tricky to unfold. You wanna be careful not to tear it, it's a little delicate. Ah, ta-da. And there is my gingerbread man. The circle, there it is. You can see a little bit of the red where I traced it. All right, so we are ready to put that onto the fabric for the cutout. So in this case, this was this burgundy that I used. You're gonna flip it over so the back side is showing. You're gonna put this fusible webbing on the back side of the fabric. Now you can see where I cut out this 10 and a half squares is, inch square is pretty generous. I just like to do that in case I wanna use a certain part of the fabric if there's a picture on it or something I wanna capture. Uh, completely up to you. So I'm really happy with the way that looks gonna sort of unfold it a little bit more. And I'm gonna take it over to my ironing board and press it as per the manufacturer's instructions for the fusible webbing, and I will be right back. Okay, so I've let that completely cool, and it's ready now to cut out. Do not take the paper off at this point. You're gonna take that off later. The paper helps keep it stable and it's easy to see, so it's easy to cut out the shape. 
So you're gonna get those good sharp scissors again. It's up to you if you wanna cut out the center first or around the outside. I like to cut around the outside. It just seems like it, uh, it's more stable that way. So you don't wanna try your best not to cut into the paper. Just cut around the outside as best as you can. Another tip if you're using different shaped cookie cutters, ones that have a lot of sharp, tiny angles, maybe like a snowflake or something, it's gonna be really hard to cut out using this method. And try and stay as close as you can to those that paper. Okay, I'm almost done. I'll be honest, this is my least favorite part of this process. It's tricky to cut around and it takes a lot of time. So there is the outside cut out. Before you start cutting out the inside, you just want to go around, make sure you don't have any little edges that you don't want, that you didn't cut, maybe a little fraying. You want to just cut it off there. Sometimes it's easier from the other side. There we go, smooth it out. I think that looks good to me. Now before, again, keep that paper on because now we're gonna cut off the middle. And the way I do that is I just snip a section to get me started. And then I'm gonna just start cutting. Okay, I'm gonna finish, trim off a few little rough edges. This is where those smaller scissors would come in handy. I just don't have my pair. And unfortunately, I tore my meniscus and I can't get down my stairs and so I can't run to get my scissors and there's nobody home right now. So these large scissors are gonna have to do today. Okay, there you have it, finally. Whew, that is. Like I said, that's my least favorite part. So now you can take off that paper backing. Just peel off one side, it's really not that hard. And I'm not sure if I remember, I don't remember if I uh, mentioned it or not at the beginning of the video, this technique is based on Anita Shackelford's book, Folded Cut Work. And she has, that's a beautiful book with lots of ideas. And so I, this technique is that same technique, just using the cookie cutters and some other alterations. So there it is. You can see the adhesive on this side which is ready to go. And then here's the front side. How cute is that going to be? I'm so excited. So now we need our background fabric. Here it is. And it is a little directional too. Doesn't really matter because this is the same on all four sides. Now you want to center this guy and that can be a little tricky. So the trick to do that is you're going to take your background fabric, you're going to fold it in half, Just like so. And you're just gonna gently finger press, like so. Open it up and see how you can see that line? That's gonna show you your center, they're going that way. Rotate it once, fold it in half this way. Finger press again. Open it up. And there you can see, very lightly, you can see that sort of cross there, and that's gonna show you how to line this up. So you're gonna take those feet and line them up, and then line them up with those feet. So basically, this little, this joiner here, this joiner here should be on that horizontal line. And this joiner here and this joiner here, these little feet should be lined up with this vertical line. And that 
centers your shape. Now I don't pin it or anything, I just carefully take it over to my ironing board and press it and again follow the manufacturer's directions for the kind of uh, um, for the kind of fusible web that you're using. So here we go. I'm going to take it over and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. Ta-da! I love this technique. It is so much fun to do. It is nice. Make sure it's cool. It, this does get hot when you're doing this, so be careful with your fingers. But this is ready to go. You can leave it like it is without sewing around the edges. I think that looks fine just as is, but I will say, you know, over time, depending on how you're going to use the quilt, if you're using this on a quilt that's used every day, maybe a blanket or something, that probably will fray the edges. So I like to finish it off with a blanket stitch or decorative stitch of some kind. If you have a fancy machine, you can do that. I made this one. This is part of a quilt I made, and I actually ended up hand stitching this blanket stitch all around the, the cutout. I would not recommend that. that. That was actually really difficult because that fusible web is really uh, hard to sew through. And when you're hand stitching, your hand gets really tired. This took me a long time to do. But I love the look of that blanket stitch around it. I think it really adds a finishing touch. There are loads of other decorative stitches you could use as an edging, uh, especially if you have one of those fancy machines that has all kinds of decorative stitches. Hey, go to town. This would be a lot of fun to do some real fun little stitches around it. But I did, I promised I would show you this technique or this uh, quilt block used in a quilt. So this is the one block. This is my gingerbread man. And I'm going to show you some other cookie cutters I used. This is just a little runner type quilt I used when I hang out for Christmas. This was candy canes. And on this one, I did use a directional fabric. You can see that. And I used gold metallic thread to really make it pop. One thing I love to do is look at the center too. I love the way the centers turn out. But when you're using that directional fabric, it takes just a few extra minutes to make sure you have everything centered the way you like it. Here is a Christmas tree with green thread. Love that one too, a little more subtle. And then lastly, on this quilt, I used a, cookie, a star cookie cutter cutout. You can see where there's real small joining edges. And I used silver metallic thread for that one. So there you have it, there is your Gingerbread Man Cookie Cutter Cutout Quilt Block Tutorial. I hope you like it. I hope you had fun watching today, and I hope you give this block a try. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.